Dear students, module 27, Cells of Immune System Introduction Immunity is the defense system of organism which act in a dynamic way against the invading pathogens. The immune system works differently in plants and animals. The cells and molecules play a significant role in immunity. Cells have their recognitions and responsibility towards the pathogenic attack. Each cell and molecule show their specificity. When a foreign body, a pathogen attacks our immune system, different cells and molecules recognize them and start an immune action. The chemical difference occurs helps the immune system to discriminate our body cells from the foreign body. Immunity can be more specific and less specific. Based on the specificity, immunity can be divided into innate immunity and adaptive immunity. The immune system of the body mainly includes different types of cells. Some cells involve in direct killing of the antigen, some cells helps in destroying the other target cells hosting the pathogens. This topic further continues with the following subtitles. A. Development of the cells of the immune system. B. Cells of immune system. C. Immune memory response. D. Phagocytic pathway E organs and tissues of the immune system A development of the cells of immune system hematopoietic stem cells or the unspecialized blood stem cells which get differentiated to form all the types of blood cells including the red blood cells, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, nature killer cells, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes and macrophages. Hemopoietic stem cell will generate in the bone marrow and umbilical cord. They have the unique feature of self renewal and differentiation, which requires genetic components for this unique feature. A large number of gene products play their role. They are developed into three types of progenitor cells they are lymphoid progenitor myeloid progenitor, erythroid progenitor. These progenitor stem cells are pluripotent. They can produce different types of cells. The lymphoid progenitor cell develops to form two types of cells namely B cells and nature killer or NK T progenitor cells. B cells can directly create the plasma cells and NK T progenitor cells develop to form NK cells and initially form immature new T cells. The myeloid progenitor cell also develops into granulocytes and other progenitor cells. Granulocytes further develop to form eosinophils, neutrophils 
and basophils. The other progenitor cells develop into the monocytes. The erythroid progenitor cell will develop into erythrocytes and erythroblasts. Erythrocytes are nothing but red blood cells. Then the erythroblasts will grow to form the platelets. This erythroid progenitor cell will not show its part in the immune system, whereas all the cells of the immune system develop from the lymphoid and myeloid progenitor cells. B. Cells of immune system. The cells which play an essential role in the immune system are B and T lymphocytes, natural killer cells, neutrophils and monocytes macrophages. All these cells have specific interaction with the antigens. B lymphocytes are one of the types of leukocytes which are white blood cells. They get matured in the bone marrow of mammals and in case of birds they mature in bursa of Pravixius. They show the features of having antibodies on their membrane. Antibodies serve as the receptor for the antigen. When the specific antigen attacks and binds on the antibodies, the immune response gets activated by the activation of B cells. T lymphocytes originate in the bone marrow, mature in the thymus. T cells also consist of membrane bound receptors called T cell receptors. Uh, they are also called as TCRs. These TCRs show different structures. They do show some similarities to immunoglobulin in their antigen binding sites. T cells are divided into two types. They are helper T cells and killer T cells or cytotoxic T lymphocytes. TH cells which are helper T cells communicate with other cells and B cells to produce antibodies. Some other TH cells recruit more T cells and phagocytes during the immune response. Killer T cells mainly attack the pathogens and destroy them. T cells show distinct membrane molecules like CD3, CD4 and CD8. T cells with CD4 membrane molecule recognize the antigen with class 2 MSC molecules, whereas CD8 membrane molecule recognize only antigen with class 1 MSC molecules. Major histocompatibility complex that is MHC is the set of genes coding for the membrane protein. Another type of T cell is called as suppressor T cells. These cells will block the signaling of the T cells and B cells whenever it is necessary. Natural killer cells form the least composition in human blood and also they are a type of cytotoxic lymphocytes. They do not possess any membrane molecules or receptors for the recognition of antigen. CD16, CD56 and interleukins 2 are some receptors present on them. NK cells have the NK receptors and these can distinguish 
the abnormalities by the presence of any surface antigen or the absence of MSC class 1 molecules. The NK mediated pathogen destruction is similar to the cytotoxic cell mediated destruction of pathogens. The CD16 receptor of the NK cell will bind to the antibody IgG and can destroy the target cell. It shows the antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity, it is also called as ADCC. They show their role in destroying the tumor cells as well as the cells which are infected with some pathogens like viruses. The killer cell which kills the target cell and that damaged target cells that is tumor cells or cancer cells will die due to apoptosis. Mainly there is no production of any memory cells. Neutrophils show the higher components of leukocytes and play an essential role in the inflammatory process. Neutrophils produce in the bone marrow and when there is any wound, mature neutrophils travel through the blood stream and reach the wounded tissue area to activate the immune response. Phagocytes act as an engulfing monster against the pathogen where they engulf the pathogen and digest them. Lysosomes consist of around 40 different hydrolytic enzymes which digest the unwanted particle. These phagocytes ingest the pathogen inside them and fuse with the lysosome to form phagosomes and destroy the content. Phagocytes mainly consist of macrophages, monocytes, dendritic cells and granulocytes. Macrophages show a significant role in the first line of defense where they engulf the pathogens and carry out the phagocytosis. Macrophages are derived from monocytes where monocytes show their role in the bloodstream but when they migrate into the tissue, they form the macrophages. Macrophages mainly act as the antigen presenting cells APCs. Monocytes are the type of leukocytes and present in the bloodstream. In the bone marrow, the progenitor cells of monocyte will differentiate to form the pro monocytes. Later, it further differentiate to form the mature monocytes. These cells will move to the bloodstream and get enlarged and move into tissues to become tissue macrophages. Dendritic cells also act as antigen presenting cells. They showcase the antigen to the T helper cells during the immune response. They are generally found in the lymph glands. They consist of four types of cells, Langerhans cells, interstitial dendritic cells, myeloid cells and lymphoid dendritic cells. Eosinophils are also the granulocytes, helps in the immune response where they travel from the bloodstream to the affected tissue region. Eosinophils play a role in parasitic infections. 
the chemical factors produced from the granules help in the damage of the parasite membrane. Basophils are the non phagocytic cells. These cells are granulocytes help in some allergic reaction. Mast cells are also granulocytic cells which consists of histamines. These cells are produced in the bone marrow during hematopoiesis and in the undifferentiated form itself they travel through the bloodstream. When they enter specific tissue, they get differentiated to form the active mass cells. They can be present in skin, mucosal epithelial cells or digestive tract. Along with the basophils, mass cells can be involved in the development of some allergic reactions. See immune memory response. Memory B cells are the cells formed along with the affector B cells. Affector cells are formed during the immune response that is plasma cells which produce the antibodies against the antigen. Mainly they show the humoral type of immunity. B cells they get originate in the bone marrow. After the development and maturation they travel to the lymph node when the immune response starts where they attack the antigen by producing the specific antibodies and at the same time the memory cells are formed. Memory cells are then come into the role when the same antigen encounters for the second time. Memory T cells they do not show any antibody productions whereas, only the B cells mature to form plasma cells and produce the antibodies. When B cells get activated, they activate T helper cells and those cells will enable the other lymphocytes to start the immune response. Memory cells will not remain for long period because T lymphocytes show their action quickly when they encounter an antigen. There will not be any form of prolonged memory T cells. The release of cytokines shows the quick response and after their immune response the majority of the T cells get destroyed by the apoptosis. At the same time when an antigen invades a large number of T cells will be produced. D phagocytic pathway usually phagocytosis occur where the cells engulf the target cell and digest them. The main work of the phagocytic cells is to gather the cells of the immune system to kill the pathogens. If there is any tissue damage which is not repairable it should be destroyed. The damaged tissues undergo apoptosis. When the tissue attacked by some pathogens then the cells of the immune system must start their work to kill those pathogens. T cells also have other types based on the receptor. Those cells consist of CD4 receptor are called T helper cells and those cells have CD8 
receptor called cytotoxic T cells. T cells importantly include T cell receptors, they call TCRs, CD28 and CD40L for the interaction with the macrophages. CD4 interacts with MSC class 2, CD8 interacts with MSC class 1, the antigen bind with MSC 2 on the macrophage surface, the CD4 T cell having TCR will interact with the antigen bound with MSC 2. The CD28 of T cells and C D 80 bar 86 of macrophages bind to each other and at the same time C D 40 L of T cells and C D 40 of macrophage bind to each other. All these interactions activate the T cells and they start to release different chemical molecules which help in the lysis of the cells. Interferon gamma interleukin 10 promotes the proliferation of more macrophages. Interleukin 2 helps in more production of T cells for the immune response and interleukins 4 bar 5 will activate the B cells. E organs and tissues of immune system. The cells play an essential role in the immune system and it is also crucial to know where the precisely these cells get originate and mature. Primarily, immune system consists of two types of organs, primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs. Primary lymphoid organs are the sites where lymphocytes cells get originate and mature. These lymphocytes play an essential role in immunity. From the primary lymphoid organs, the matured cells migrate to the target point and do their action. Secondary lymphoid organs are the sites where these cells show their action against the invading pathogens. Primary lymphoid organs. Bone marrow is the organ where the B cells get originated. The site of maturation and proliferation of B cells in different species varies. Bone marrow is the smooth flexible tissue locates inside the bones. Bone marrow can produce many cells per day, cells get produced and after maturation they are released into the circulatory system through the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system which connects to the lymphoid organs and consists of fluid inside them called lymph. The thymus is the organ where T cells get to develop and mature. The thymus is the small bilobed structure present in the thoracic cavity above the heart. They are fully grown before the birth and the structure which consists of two regions namely inner medulla and outer cortex region. The outer covering of the organ which is the mesh like structure and inner regions consist of epithelial cells 
macrophages and dendritic cells. It consists of a long process for the development and maturation of thymocytes, secondary lymphoid organs. It includes the well organized lymph nodes, spleen and less organized lymphatic tissues called mucosal associated lymphoid tissue, multi. The lymph node is the small nodes which are bean shaped present in the junctions of lymphatic vessels which consist of lymph that is the fluid which helps in the transfer of the cells to immune system. When an antigen enter into the body, they get trapped in the lymph nodes and lymph carrying cells of the immune system like lymphocytes, phagocytes and dendritic cells start the immune response by recognizing the antigen. The lymph node is a well organized structure consists of three regions. They are outer cortex, paracortex and an inner medulla. Each region consists of different cells of the immune systems and responsible for the development of those cells. Mainly in these organs, the immune response towards the antigens takes place by the trapping of those antigen present in nearby tissues. Spleen primary function is to filter the blood and protect from any unwanted particle or infectious pathogens. This secondary lymphoid organs responsible for the trapping of antigen which are present in the blood whereas, lymph node shows its role in killing the antigen in the lymphatic vessels connected to them. Spleen present near the stomach at the left abdominal cavity. They show an organized structure consist of two main parts. They are red pulp and white pulp. The red pulps consist of mainly the red blood cells and macrophages. The aged RBCs get destroyed by the help of macrophages. White pulp possesses the branches of peri-anteriolar lymphoid sheath is also called as PALS consists of T lymphocytes. PALS help in the activation of B and T lymphocytes. The antigens which are blood borne get trapped in the spleen and destroyed by the cells of the immune system present in the spleen. Mucosal associated lymphoid tissue MAILT. Mucus in the fluid present in our body plays a significant role as a primary barrier for any pathogens and also a lubricant to nourish the tissues. As the name suggests, the mucosal membrane in the respiratory, gastrointestinal and urinogenital tracts are mainly protected by the lymphoid tissues called MAILT. These tissues present in the lamina propria of intestinal villi tonsils and appendix etcetera. These tissues mainly consist of a large number of plasma cells responsible for the production of antibodies against the antigen. The antigens present in the lumen of the tract are presented into the tissue 
by the epithelial cells on the mucosal membrane. Antigen gets trapped and transported into the tissue by the help of cells called M cells. These cells release those antigen inside the tissue and they kill by the engulfing the antigen particles process or by the action of plasma cells by producing antibodies. To conclude, the lymphocytes are the cells having the characteristics of specificity, diversity, memory and self or non-self recognition in immunogenic response. Primary and secondary lymphoid organs act as a site for self antigen eliminations and interaction with other antigens respectively. Thank you.